bless him, I bless him. Instead of dirt, it's something you can invest in. He said the earth takes shape like clay to the seal when it's pressed in. Heaven stretched out like a tent to rest in. The sky is the, the, sky limit. the limit. No literally could the firmament hit you. The sky the limit. It has no need for the earth to be a ball spinning and rotating or anything like that. 79,000 feet, we're about to hit 80. You know, it's a heavier payload than we had last time. I'm hoping I'm hoping we get to at least 100,000. Anything above that is going to be bonus in my mind. We got to 118,000 last time. Yeah. Um, anyway, I wanted to give a shout out to, uh, to that video because it's stuff like that. I mean, everybody gets in this mindset, well, that's the way it is. That's, and there's no other plausible explanation. It's like, well, wait a minute. What if you took a minute and thought about it? it uh, what I've found more often than not is there's never just one, only one answer right. to a lot of these questions. Like the, you see these videos, 10 proofs, 10 proofs. We know the earth is a globe. And the first time I saw that video was I wasn't even into this. I don't even think a month yet, maybe two or three weeks. And I'm looking at the top 10 reasons why we know the Earth's a globe, right? And immediately, I just said, well, what if I flip the board? And then what I meant by that was, you know, I like to play chess. And like if Rick and I were playing chess, I yeah, want to get into play. his head. I, I want to get into his head. I want to know, why did he make that move? Was that a strategic move? Was that a stupid move? Does he see an opening? Did I make a stupid move? What's he doing? If I can view the chessboard from his side of the table, you know, then I can have a better idea of what he's doing and, you know, plan my strategy better. So basically what I mean by flipping the board is, okay, at that time I still hardcore believed in the expanding globe, Neil Adams model of the expanding globe. I was a hardcore believer in that. I even taught a, a, a seminar on it in December of 2014. So here it is, April of 2015, you know, just a few months later, and I'm going, okay, let's pretend I'm a hardcore flat earther. How could I combat these 10 alleged proofs of the globe? And I found that it was actually pretty easy, real easy, for at least seven or eight of them. At least seven or eight of them were really easy to flip the board on. Two of them were... Uh, the two actually that I had a hard time with at that time were the Coriolis effect yep. and uh, the lunar eclipse. And I think the, the ether perfectly explains the Coriolis effect. There's a lot of things that people call the Coriolis effect that really it's not there. Right. Like the whole idea of long range shooters having to adjust because of this. the Earth is spinning so fast in one second underneath the speeding bullet. That the target moves out of the way. Uh, that is like, are immune to it. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and helicopters. Yeah. Like when I was a helicopter pilot, when you learn how to fly helicopters, you the first thing you learn how to do is to hover, and you have to be able to master the three foot hover. So you spend a lot of time at three feet above the earth, just, just trying to get that you know from the helicopter moving all over the place. Were you bringing the no, I never had to follow the moving earth, yeah, exactly. uh, and the and the airfield never left, you know, from under me, ever. Which, you know, if you're sitting there at a three foot hover, if the, if the theory is that the bullet has left the earth, and so it's free from the effects of the earth, such that the earth spins underneath it, so you have to adjust, so the target, you know, yeah. as it's moving, that's patently absurd. You know, it doesn't work that way for frisbees, footballs, ladybugs, helicopters, or airplanes. Right. So, I mean, a lot of these arguments. Oh, your phone's got low battery here, dude. It's okay. Um, I'm gonna plug this thing in. Here, here, here. Oh, it's, it's twenty percent. Is it close? Yeah. Well, it's gonna close everything if I hit close. You sure? Yeah. I think it's gonna hit everything. Okay. Seems like every time I do that on my phone, it just sh shuts the phone down. Yeah. Of course, with my oh, phone. Plug into this one. It'll reach. Unless you're uh, using your battery thing. We'll use my battery thing. Hang on. Sorry, guys. But, anyway, well, but what Rob was saying about the Coriolis effect, the other thing, too, is you have to look at the programming that we've received. Uh, like, for instance, I remember specifically watching uh, or reading a, an Iron Man comic book when I was a kid, and there was no Coriolis effect inside the globe, inside the dome, inside the. Uh, underneath the uh, Van Allen belt or whatever, or the ozone. It's when he shot up through and went into quote unquote space 
then the earth moved out from underneath him and he was able to get from one point to the other point a lot faster because he used the earth's rotation rather than taking off and that's something that was programmed into my mind so i naturally i believe that stuff because it's in the comic book it's what's taught in textbooks it's all of it but when you test it there are other variables and that's when you know the folks that are saying oh this is stupid or this is dumb yeah, they haven't sat down to think about other plausible reasons for how things yes, can work. That's exactly right. And I, and I understand. A lot of people don't want to think that much. A lot of people say, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to, well, for whatever, for whatever reason, God's put that on my heart to test these things and to tell the truth. That's what, I'm not out to try and make anybody mad. Rob's not out to make anybody mad. Trust me, this is not, uh, this is not going to win you any popularity contests by coming out and saying, I'm a biblical earther. I do believe it's a lot more flat than it is a sphere, especially with what we've tested. 